One week ago last Sunday, I attended a lecture at the new and the incredibly beautiful Presidential Library of George Washington. The presentation was made by the dynamic young founding director, Dr. Doug Bradburn. In the course of his comments, he explained how the famous likeness of this bust of George Washington came into existence. I believe you'll find the story fascinating and relevant. George Washington became the focus throughout Europe as an incredible leader who had defied all odds in defeating what at that time was the most powerful military in the world, Great Britain. The populace throughout Europe hungered for every detail about this conquering hero, this, this hero who did not claim the spoils of war for himself. In particular, they wanted to know what he looked like. Because it was not possible that he would ever cross the ocean to visit Europe, the desired alternative at that time was to have a sculpture of his likeness made and then duplicates made from that. The renowned artist of that time who had done kings and queens and was currently commissioned to do Catherine the Great of Russia was Jean-Antoine Houdon. He was to the 18th century what Michelangelo was to the 16th century. Three Americans serving in Europe at that time implored the great artist to make the trip across the ocean to the new land of America and to create the likeness. They were the immediate past U.S. ambassador to France, Benjamin Franklin, the current U.S. Ambassador to France, Thomas Jefferson, and the new U.S. Ambassador to England, John Adams. They presented their strong and their united request to Houdon to do so. Houdon was favorably moved by the notion. He was excited to think that he could meet the great general and be the artist to capture his likeness for the ages. But it was not to be his decision alone. The King of France, Louis XVI was not anxious to have such a national treasure as Houdon makes such a voyage across the Atlantic, which at times could be quite perilous. So, as a condition for Houdon going to America, the King of France demanded that one condition had to be secured first. He demanded that there be a life insurance policy. Thus, the three American founding fathers in Europe immediately went to work to secure a life insurance policy. Jefferson wrote to Adams the following inquiry, quote, is insurance made on Houdon's life? I am uneasy about it lest we should hear of any accident. As yet there's no reason to doubt their safe passage. If the insurance is not made, I will pray you to have it done immediately. Further correspondence was exchanged between Jefferson and Adams. Adams pointing out that, quote, I am afraid that certificates of Houdon's state of health will be required, and the noise of Algerian captures may startle the insurers. John Adams finally wrote the following to Thomas Jefferson. The insurance is made upon Houdon's life for six months from the 12th of October. I have paid 32 pounds, 11 shillings premium and charges which you will please to give me credit for. I cannot persuade them to look back, as they say they never insure but for the future and the date of the policy." Unquote. And thus, because of a life insurance policy, the renowned Houdon completed the sculpture which Supreme Court Justice John Marshall said, and I quote, was a perfect image of the living Washington. Houdon's masterpiece now resides permanently at George Washington's beloved home, Mount Vernon.